Hey guys, this is Patrick from STH. Today, we're gonna take a look at these things right here, which are the brand new HPE Aruba Instant On 1960 switches. And we have two different switches. We have the 48 port model and then also the 24 port model. And I'm not gonna continue holding them because that would be silly. Now, just for some quick context, a couple of weeks ago, the HPE guys reached out to me and they said, hey, do you guys wanna go, and we know you do a lot of switch reviews, do you wanna go look at the brand new Aruba switches that we have? And I was like, well, kind of, what kind of switches are they? And they're like, well, you know, these are like one gigabit switches. They also have some 10 gig ports and they're really kind of meant to be like a layer two plus switch with like kind of really focus on the SMB market. And I was like, you know what? We've done a lot of reviews in that segment. So sure, why not go do that? On STH, we have been doing a lot of really high-end switch reviews. You know, we've been doing switches with, you know, 25, 100, 200 gigabit, and even 400 gigabit ethernet ports, but we haven't really been doing a lot of the lower end switches. So I said, hey, let's go do these as well. And the original thought was that we were just gonna have STH main site reviews. And then I was like, you know what, let's just go throw this into a video and let's go do that. And so you'll be able to check out the STH main site reviews in the link in the description. We're probably gonna stagger and we're gonna have one review and then the other, but we'll have this video go live when we do the first review. I don't actually know as I'm recording this, which one that will be, but you'll be able to check those out in the description. We'll update the description as we publish the reviews. And so for this, we're just gonna do a very, very quick video and we're gonna look at the hardware and then we're gonna go look at the software side and kind of explain what Aruba is doing here. And I actually think that, you know, this is actually a pretty cool solution. So I'm pretty excited to get to show you that. Okay, now first what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the 24 port version, but to actually go see what the model number, the model number of this other than the 1960 switch is actually not printed on the outside of this chassis, even on the top, when the top's on, it's not there. Instead, you're gonna see this little orange tab, which is our service tag. And if you go and you pull it out, you can actually finally see what the model number is. Now, the easiest way to go find this is of course, just to say that this is the JL806A, but this is the 24G2XGT SFP, or sorry, 2SFP plus. And what that practically means is pretty simple. I mean, we got 24 one gigabit ethernet ports. We also have two 10 gigabit ethernet ports. And then we have, and these are 10 G based T ports. And then we have two SFP plus 10 gigabit ports. Now looking at the back of the switch, all we're gonna see is like our serial number type information. And then also we have the power input. This is a single power supply version and it's an internal power supply. So it's not redundant and it is not hot swappable. If you do wanna have a redundant power input into this, maybe you have like a UPS plus you have a main feed, then what you would do is you would use something like an automatic transfer switch, switch or an ATS. And that's what would be able to give you A and B power to a single outlet device like this. One of the more interesting things I have to say on the 24 port version is just the fact that if you look at the outside of the switch, there's basically not a lot going on on the back. The front has the ports and stuff, but what you will see is that you have the instant on, but you also have this giant vent on the side of the switch. And the reason for that, you can actually see when we get inside the switch, and that's just the fact that this is actually a completely passively cooled switch. Now, that means that this thing is completely silent, and I thought there was a fan in it, and then I plugged it in, and I was like, oh, actually, it's, uh, it's super quiet. And so when I looked in it, it didn't actually have a fan, and so that is absolutely awesome. It means that it's a silent switch, and you know it's hard not to love that kind of thing. Inside the switch, though, there's just not a whole lot. I mean, we have the main PCB that has all of our switching components, and management processor, all that kind of stuff. And then we have the little power supply and that's basically, and there's some wires to connect everything, but that's basically everything that's in this system. But the flip side, because we do not have a fan inside the system and we have that big vent, it also means that if you do say, you know, as some people will actually go, especially in the SMB market, will actually go and put these switches underneath things like desks or workbenches or things like that. And one of the things, and also walls, and one of the things you have to worry about when you do that is you can't cover up this big vent because if you do cover up that big vent, that means that you don't have any airflow or you don't have enough airflow and you could overheat the switch. So my suggestion is always make sure that that is not you know, facing a surface because, uh, you know, you need to dissipate heat somehow because you don't have a fan. But when we get to the larger model, the 24 port model, you definitely see fans. And also for longtime STH readers, you'll notice that these are super light switches compared to some of the larger and heavier duty switches that we do reviews of. So it is kind of nice that I can just kind of pick it up and just kind of show you guys. Now we can pull out the service tag and we can see that this is the 
JL808A. The 809A, by the way, would be the PoE version of the Switch. And we're gonna talk about that little story on that in a sec. But that's basically this version of the Switch. And then we have 48G, so gigabit ethernet ports. We again have the 10 G base T ports. So we have two X G T ports, and then we have two SFP plus ports. One little thing that I really like that HPE or Aruba, whatever you want to call this, they do with these switches that I really just love is the fact that like these 10 gigabit ethernet ports, they're actually lined up between the 24 port and the 48 port versions. Likewise, when you get to the rear of the system, you're going to see that inside these switches are very different or at least somewhat different. But on the back of the system, again, you just have the serial numbers and you have that power input, but the power supply input is basically in the exact same spot as the 24 port version. So that means that as you're racking these things up or you know putting them wherever, it's actually kind of neat and orderly, which I just kind of like the fact that everything's just kind of lined up in the same spot. Sometimes with these SMB switches, what you'll see is like, you'll have like one model where it'll be like, you know, here's where the power supply input is. And then the next model, it'll be over a little bit. And it just kind of looks a little messy when you kind of rack everything up. Up. This is just kind of nice. I just, I like the fact that it's just that little attention to detail that Aruba does here. All right, now it's time for our 1990s boombox shot. And we're basically going to see inside the system is the fact that we have the power supply on top. And then we have the main PCB. This is again, much larger than we saw in the 24 port version. But that of course makes sense because we don't just have 24 ports. We have another 24 additional ports. And so you definitely see a lot more in terms of the overall I guess, PCB and coverage in this system. You're also gonna see that there are more heat sinks because of course we need more components to go and handle more ports, totally makes sense. But one feature that is worth noting is the fact that we do have a fan in this system. It's a single fan. And the one thing that I will note in terms of just kind of, you know, this was actually very, very quiet. This was not a very loud unit when we had it on. Something that you will see is that the fan is not really in line with like the main set of heat sinks. And why that's important is that this is not really there to you know, pull a ton of airflow. I mean, frankly, a 48 port switch like this is just, uh, or sorry, 48 port plus four 10 gig port is just not going to use that much power. The switch chips for these are pretty power efficient. And so, you know, you just don't need that much airflow in a large chassis like this. And so that fan is able to run at a relatively low speed. And after the initial power on, you could kind of hear it if you kind of loaded the switch, but otherwise you basically didn't hear this switch. And then the other one was passive. Okay, just a really quick fun one before we get to the software. When the HPE guys reached out and they said like, hey, we want you and Rohit to go review the switch. I was like, okay, cool. And one of the things I thought we were getting was that we were getting two switches, which we got, but I thought we were gonna get two PoE switches. And I was really excited because we're doing a lot on PoE switches and we have a couple other models that we're gonna be working through over the next couple of weeks. And so I was really excited. And so I was getting this thing all set up in the lab and I was like plugging in a whole bunch of PoE devices and nothing worked. Like I went and I plugged in a camera didn't work. I plugged in a little tiny pilot KVM and, and that's based on a Raspberry Pi with PoE in it's brand new V2 version that maybe we'll do a video of, but that thing has, you know, PoE in and it was working on another switch. It wasn't working on this. I'm like, oh man, is this like some kind of proprietary PoE? Like what the heck is going on here? And so, you know, I kept plugging in devices and nothing worked. And then I just kind of said like, Hmm, I wonder if this is actually a PoE switch or not. And that is exactly when I finally opened up and looked at the service tag and realized that these are not the PoE models. They're actually the non PoE models. So that is one reason that I actually think in terms of a product suggestion, I really would have liked to have seen the model number, the full model number actually on the faceplate because like, you know, these are actually pretty big switches and they seem like they're very big switches because there's a lot of empty space, especially in like the 24 port model. And even though they're light and you can kind of tell, it would have been nice if there was an easier way to go identify, you know, the fact that that was actually not a PoE model. Of course, I think most people would have figured that out a lot faster, but I needed a little bit of sleep and I didn't figure it out until way too late. Yeah, it was kind of embarrassing. I needed some coffee. The other thing though, in terms of hardware, I just want to talk about the 10 gigabit ethernet ports. On one hand, I really do like the fact that we have the 10 G base T ports along with the SFP plus ports. But on the other hand, I do think the fact that the SFP plus to 10 G base T uh, pluggables are so inexpensive these days. I mean, you know, they're 40 to maybe $65 or so for, you know, a whole bunch of just generic brands. And so just kind of given that pricing, I kind of would almost rather nowadays on a switch like this have all SFP plus and then have the ability to use those kind of pluggable modules to go get 
uh, 10G based T or even down clock into you know 5G based T or two and a half gigabit ethernet. Overall though, this is definitely a nice hardware package, but let's get to the software side because I think that's gonna be really interesting. Now, what I'm gonna do is just kind of run through some screens and I'm just gonna do a little bit of voiceover. But we're not actually gonna talk about the exact screens that are gonna be up. I just wanna kind of give you a feel for what the UI looks like. Now, when you initially configure the switch, something that I do not like that Aruba does here is that they use 192.168.1.1 as the kind of default IP address. That address is often used in a lot of SMB ecosystems as kind of like the kind of default. And usually there's like a gateway or something like that at that address. And so I just kind of wish that Aruba decided, hey, let's go use something else. And that's especially so because the management address is hard coded and it's not a DHCP address. So when you plug it in, you have to basically go and connect via static IP to be able to get to the box. And why that also matters is that by default, you don't have a gateway. And what that practically means is that you need to actually log into the box to really be able to go do that kind of cloud connection, because otherwise you're just not going to have, uh, we just didn't get a cloud IP address. And so we couldn't connect to the cloud. And there are two ways that you can go and actually manage this. You can either use the web interface, or you can go and do the cloud interface. Most of what we did was really use the kind of onboard web management interface. Something that I did notice when we went through is that number one, Aruba has a ton of features. I was actually kind of surprised with the level of feature set that we saw in here. It definitely feels at least like it's a step or two above what a Netgear would offer. And so I thought that that was pretty good. And the other thing that I just really noticed is that sometimes when you get these SMB switches, the management processors are frankly not very snappy. In fact, we actually just did a 48 port 10 gig switch with I think uh, six 100 gig ports on the STH main site. And that thing had a much slower UI than this has. This, this UI, you know, we're showing this and this definitely feels pretty darn snappy. Of course, you can go do things like you can set up all your basic L2 plus networking features. Of course, you can do VLANs as you would expect. You can also do, you know, flow control. You can do things like set up ACLs. There's also DDoS protect protection on ports and stuff like that. So there's a lot of different features that are in here and you can do some routing-ish in it as well, but you're probably not gonna use this as a router. Again, kudos to the Aruba team here because I think they did an absolutely great job and just running through this management interface, we, we do a ton of these kind of SMB switches and I definitely have to say that this feels like a much higher end switch than some of the other offerings in the market. So again, great job Aruba on this. And then on the cloud side, you can just basically get the serial number, set up a DHCP address, and then you can basically register with the Aruba Instant On Cloud. And then you're able to go manage a number of devices like that. Something I do want to talk about though, is that this switch is very different from some of the other switches that we see in the market. And the reason for that is that there is basically everything in this switch without having to go get other licenses. And then you don't also need subscriptions. Like there are a lot of things out there. Uh, a lot of vendors have subscription models. Even Netgear has the Insight subscription, which is, you know, not my favorite, but you know, they make you pay for that. And then on the HP Aruba side, you don't have to go pay for their cloud service. You can get the full management experience by also just kind of logging into each device individually with the web server that's on them. You know, just personally, I like the fact that everything's included. I don't really like to go pay for subscriptions for these kind of things. And I also like the fact that the web management interface is just awesome on this. So I think that Aruba did a great job here. But before closing out, I do want to nitpick on two other things. Specifically, the first one is just the pricing on these things. When you look at the pricing, one of the things that you're going to notice is just the fact that it is definitely priced at a premium compared to some of the more like kind of traditional SMB vendors. It's also kind of a discount to some of the things that you'd see, especially at street pricing, what you would see Cisco switches for in this kind of thing, especially once you include like subscriptions and all that kind of stuff and optics and what have you. And so one of the things that you're going to notice is that the list price and the street price on these are, are quite different. Uh, usually there's somewhere on a you know 25 to 30% discount on just kind of like a web retail street price versus list price. So you may see something uh, like the 48 port version of the switch will probably go for about, I would say, 1050 to maybe $1,100. And then you would see the 24 port switch would go for, I guess it's somewhere it's gonna sell for just like six to $700. And those are street prices, not MSRP. And if you just kind of compare that to some of the lower end SMB vendors, like, you know, if you have a Ubiquiti, Netgear, Microtik, but especially Ubiquiti, Microtik, Microtik has way less expensive switches, but they're kind of smaller vendor. You also have Ubiquiti, which is a pretty well-known vendor. Um, and their switches are just much less expensive for something like this. But of course, there are other vendors that are much more expensive that are kind of like the larger traditional vendors. And so you kind of look at those kind of two extremes and you say, 
okay, I guess, I guess, you know, maybe this is a premium product and there's a little bit of a premium based on that, but it doesn't seem like it's just crazy, especially if you are in Aruba shop already and you're using, say, Aruba Wi-Fi or something like that, then at that point, you know, I think this is definitely a well-priced solution, although you probably be getting the PoE switches anyway. And speaking of Wi-Fi, I do want to bring up one other thing that I think is super important, just and this is just a personal opinion. These switches were launched at the very end of 2021, but they really started hitting availability in early 2022. And why that matters is, you know, we're seeing a definite trend and we're not talking about like the low end PoE cameras and, you know, lighting or all those kind of PoE devices, but we're definitely starting to see a trend for things like Wi-Fi APs have definitely started to transition to two and a half gig ethernet as we got to, especially, you know, Wi-Fi 6E now. So we're starting to see that the one gig ethernet for some infrastructure is just kind of not there. A lot of the desktop PCs we're starting to see with things like two and a half gig ethernet. And so that's becoming, you know, from a device standpoint, I'm starting to see that the transition of two and a half gig ethernet has really started to take hold. And, you know, if this product was launched three years ago, it maybe was a little bit early for two and a half gig ethernet. But, you know, especially the fact that this is a 20, basically 22 product. I kind of wish that this was a two and a half gig ethernet product, especially since this is a little bit more of a premium product. I just kind of feel like that would have made me just like super excited out of my mind for these switches. Now, of course, there's still tons of one gigabit ethernet gear out there, so I totally get it. And the fact that we do have 10 gig ports is great. You can also do stacking and set that up. I think up to four switches on this. We were able to switch to do it with two in our stack, but uh, we didn't have four switches, so we couldn't, couldn't test all up to four, but you can definitely do stacking up to two switches and most likely up to four. And so that is kind of nice and something that's a little bit differentiated in this. Again, premium product, but on the other hand, you don't necessarily have that, you know, two and a half gig ethernet. So it's kind of like straddling that line there. Overall though, I would say super awesome management experience. I absolutely love this. This is probably one of my favorite switches to actually go and manage, especially if you're going to do it like in an SMB style where you're really using that web GUI or, you know, a cloud instance. I think that these are absolutely great for that. I also really like the fact that they absolutely Absolutely sipped power. I mean, we're talking, you know, nine watts or so, a little over nine watts at idle on the 24 port unit. And at the 48 port unit was a little bit higher than that, but only a couple watts higher. So I mean, like these things absolutely sipped power. And then, you know, the 24 port version, that was completely passively cooled. And then the 48 port version, you had like one slowly spinning fan that was pretty quiet. So I, I, I think that, you know, Aruba definitely nailed a huge portion of this overall product. So anyway, go check out the reviews on the STH main site. We're going to have those again linked in the description. Again, we're going to have a ton more in terms of networking on STH. We're doing firewalls. We got a whole bunch of switches that we're going to be doing. So we have a lot more coming and we're also going to be doing some of those on YouTube as well. So stay tuned. And if you did like this video, well, why don't you give it a like, click subscribe, turn on the notifications so you can see whenever we come out with great new videos. As always, thanks for watching. Have an awesome day.